Hey and welcome back. This is Michael Kalish with Food Safety Guides. We're going to take another look at the proposed food traceability rule. Here we are in the rule itself. Now it's divided up into several different sort of divisions of sections. Uh, they, they're not exactly given name, uh, numbered. Uh, they're not numbered in the regulatory text, but these are them. Now we're only going to focus on a few of them. So let's jump into general provisions. I want to focus mostly on the key definitions here. There are two of them. The first one is a critical tracking event, or CTE. It's an event in the supply chain of a food involving growing, receiving, uh, transforming, creating, or shipping of the food. So uh, think of these as the sort of points that punctuate the supply chain. Now, at each one of these points is the collection of key data elements, or KDEs. And um, these generally include these three types of, types of things, location information, traceability information, and reference records information. So we'll take a look at what those mean. Now I have a scenario here for you today. It's gonna to be pepper jack cheese. And uh, the um, if you remember from the uh, food traceability list, fresh peppers is on the list. So uh, we're gonna take a look at this. Now on the top here, I have transporters. On the bottom, I have farms and facilities. That includes warehouses. And then on the right side, I have domestic. And on the left side, I have foreign. So let's go. All right, so the farmer grows and harvests the jalapenos, hands it off to a truck, brings it to a packing house. The packing house then puts it into a truck that then takes it to a factory. This is where there's a kill step applied and we have the jalapeno flakes uh, bottled and ready to go. From there, it's put on a transport vehicle taken to a warehouse. This, this warehouse coordinates with the freight forwarder to bring it to the United States. It's passed through customs and then put onto a truck and brought to a DC, a distribution center for a distributor. From there, it's sold to a business. So it's picked up by a transporter and it's, uh, it's transported to a factory that adds the peppers into cheese. Uh, during the process of manufacturing the cheese. From there, a truck picks it up, package, brings it to another factory that slices it, it's a co-manufacturer, and packs it, as you can see here. From there, it's picked up by another truck, it's brought to a distribution warehouse, where this distributor is selling to retailers, so it's picked up from it by a truck and brought to a retailer. Whew. All right, now I didn't cover all the entities in the supply chain, but that's enough for now. now let's take a look at these, defi these different definitions. Originator. It means a person who grows, raises, or catches a food. In this case, they're the one that grew. They're the one that grew the pepper. So uh, that was the originating. From there, it was uh, it was shipped. And so ship shipping is is going on across the supply chain. Just be aware that shipping isn't uh, limited to the physical the physical entities that uh, they're the the physical locations where the shipping is happening. There are also people who are arranging for transport. Now, shipping doesn't include sale or shipment of food directly to consumer or the donation of a surplus food. Keep that in your mind. Now, first receivers are the first person, other than the farm, who purchases and takes physical possession of the food on the food traceability list. Okay? Now, uh, that's the first receiver. There are going to be a lot of people receiving these goods, but that's the first receiver. Now, be aware of that because the requirements do apply to these different kinds of entities. Next is transformation. That means an event in a food supply chain that involves changing, that involves changing a food on the food traceability list. Now the peppers are on the list. Uh, if this were um, milk, it would not be uh, milk is not on the food traceability list, so that would not be an act of transformation. Okay. Now, uh, as you can see here, transformation does include things like cutting and cooking and so on. It does not include the initial packaging of a single ingredient food or creating a food. Next is. Um, and this is a big call out because a lot of people don't uh, read this in the fine text. If you apply a kill step, as we just saw, on a food traceability, uh, for food on the food traceability list, the requirements of subpart do not apply to your subsequent shipping of the food, provided that you maintain a record of your application of that kill step. So in other words, the record keeping going on here is going to cease um, after that after that kill step has been applied. So this product is no longer on the food traceability list uh, as it continues forward in the supply chain. Now, when it gets to the factory here and added to cheese, now they're making cheese. So they're creating, or that is they're making or producing a food on the traceability list that are uh, from ingredients that are not on the traceability list. We're gonna pick this up in our next video.